Thank you guys for watching my reptile channel. If you're a fan of my videos, please go ahead and like my videos. It helps spread my channel. And comment down below. I love that interaction. If you want to hit the bell, you can be notified of when I post a video, which is great. Uh, I also have a Patreon, so if you want to support, it's down below. Right, guys? Thank you. I can always rely on one. Okay, where do we even start with this, guys? Well, you can already tell because you can already see the title. What the heck does it mean when I say I'm, we're going to be feeding and looking at both my black throat monitors? Two? I have two black throat monitors. How did this happen? How did I go from none to two? Oh, it's going to be a little bit of story time combined with the feeding, combined with an update. So don't worry about that. And we're going to talk about more of the black throat monitor and everything when we mix it in with the story. But um, let's just start the story that on Thanksgiving Day, I came in to check out and look at my original black throat monitor. And I found this is a normal way where the glass is touching the side here. And everyone knows my black throat monitor is that big. And I found the tank like this. And the black throat monitor was not in the tank because the lock was not on. Great. That's how we're going to start the story. So here's black throat monitor number two. And some of you picked up right away that black throat monitor number two did not look exactly like the first black throat monitor that you had seen in this cage. Um, yes, it had been a week since you seen them and it was shedding and it was still a male, but its face, its face is much longer. And the people who picked up on that, you know, I gave subtle hints and everything, but you were right. This is not the original black throat monitor. This is the second black throat monitor that I got. And there is a reason as to why when I said, hey, and I gave everyone a little clue and I said, hey, this monitor may, you know, you may see that it's not as friendly as you think it would be a week into ownership. Well, that's because I had only had this black throat for one day. And, um... That was your guys' first clue. Now what I'm going to attempt to do is we're going to attempt to lure him out with some food and I'm going to show you some of his, the interesting ways that they can eat. So so this one I haven't had for, for that long. Um, but still we want to do, you know, the things I have talked about in terms of intelligence mode and things like that. So if I were to try to go buy him, see he's going to get really in a defensive posture here. You know, he's not only is he newer... He's also shedding if you look at his tail. So, but I want to show you when I introduce the food source, and he's not super convenient in, in knowing what exactly dubia roaches are. So let's go ahead and bring a, I'm going to bring a dubia down, down to him, and uh, we'll see how he reacts. Here comes a little dubia. Here he is. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's make sure we can keep this guy in frame. So normally, what you'll see, yeah, is he gets very inquisitive about it. He likes to shove his face right up in there with the dubia uh, and give it a good little bite, which, which is nice. Let's make sure you stay focused here, buddy, because um, you're moving around a lot on me. But this is, this is going to be the key thing here is, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can see also everything that goes into it. He gets really inquisitive. He gets his nose up in there. He gets his hand up in there. He really wants to know what what are these things he's eating. Look at the way he's licking it. He's checking and boom, right in there for the attack, which is awesome. Bam. Good job. So he is also not super used to eating dubia roaches. Not a huge deal, and we're just gonna feed him some. So it's just super simple. These are really good for him. Now, some people have asked, why am I gonna be feeding these guys dubia roaches? Well, the main thing is because they're growing, and the protein inside a dubia roach is really good. Now, it is true, 
these guys eat meat, uh, so there would not be as much harm. Zoom really in on here on you. Try to stay in frame, my friend. So there really would be no harm feeding them a mouse, except that pinky mice are not that great in uh, in terms of health value. Let's uh, manual focus this guy. camera does not like him there we go there we're playing good better with now with manual focus so a pinky mouse is really just fat right and that that's our big problem is we don't want to load this guy up on just fatty things right away if we can offer them dubia roaches great okay and he is nice and and getting full so he's doing me a threatening little tail whip now he's you saw him swipe at that that's what this crazy guy does. So we'll, we'll choose to feed him dubia roaches over uh, pinky mice until he can just get a little bit higher and start having, you know, a little bit of a fuzzy mouse. Uh, that way he can get more protein and more calcium because pinky mice, the bones really aren't super developed. There's not, there's just, just a cluster of fat, right? And we don't want that. We want to get them, we got to give them some high amounts of protein. So we're going to give them some gut loaded dubias. Uh, so you see the way he eats, he's more aggressive. And you can see the shed coming off on his tail over there. But that's okay. So this is um, blackthroat number two. We're going to go check out blackthroat number one, feed blackthroat number one, and continue the story of what happened when I found the cage uh, opened about an inch. It's uh. It's very drama. And you guys may remember this tank, although it looks different now, but that back is the same. Do any of you guys remember who came in this tank originally? I'll give you a second. That's right. This was Johnny Cage's tank. So the original Blackthroat, if I were to guess, is under there, although Chan he could be up on the light. No, he's not. Um... So the original black throat is under here, and I thought we'd start, we'll show off his little tank that he lives in here. Um, pretty simple, right? He's got a temperature probe here to probe out the cool side of his tank, although he likes to bury it. His little water dish here. Open plane, his basking platform, which does have a mercury vapor bulb that on, on top of a ceramic heat emitter that heats this thing up to about 100 and. 15 to 120 degrees um blackthroat adults guys should be basking at about 130 but that's just a little too hot for the babies the babies don't like to go out in that um, that amount of heat so they'll, they'll avoid it so you keep it just a little cooler and then once they become um sub adults you can raise that up uh, a hammock that he can climb on although he also climbs up on top of this rock hide and then he's and then the hide in there which obviously has a one of my socks in it uh, which is really nice. So so this is where he's going to be living for the time being. Isn't it nice when you can reuse tanks? And I had some um, some insulation, since this is a glass on all side tank, some of this uh, insulation that I've wrapped around it. This came in one of the, the Rodent Pro uh, boxes with the rodents. So why don't we go ahead and pull out Blackthroat number one so you guys can check him out. So normally the easiest way really is to just get the hide and yeah, there's our little buddy. All right, let's zoom in. So right, this may look a lot more familiar to you guys. The his size is much smaller. Uh, he's you know looks looks more original. Come on, and I'm gonna get him to try to come up onto this ledge here, and you'll see the way he eats much more calm. There we go, little buddy. Yes, let's put this, and we're going to have to focus in for you because, of course, you are right in front. Look at how pretty you are, though. Right here. That's a good focus lock. So, much more peaceful, much more calm. There's no hissing going on. Uh, none of that craziness that the other guy was doing. Look at that. So, what happened? Well, as he continues to eat, I'll do the story. So... So this guy got out of that little inch gap and was missing in my house for eight days. That's right. For over one week, this dude was just patrolling the house. Uh, who knows where he was? Now, guys, I 
basically assembled the search party for him. My family came over, we looked, we were even looking when it got dark out, you know, we were turning on lights, we were we were uh, using flashlights. We moved all the furniture out of my rooms. We looked everywhere. I went and I got this super high-powered flashlight from Home Depot that I slept with in my bed because every two and a half to three hours I would wake up at night to, to patrol the, the floors of the house to see if I could find this guy. Uh, and I couldn't find this guy anywhere. I took um, mercury vapor bulbs and heat bulbs and set them up on lamp stands throughout the house, spread out. Look at how smart he is. Just to just to leave little heat platforms. He never went to one of them with a camera watching each one so I could review footage. He never went to any of them. So on day eight, oh, I even bought a borescope camera to go down in my vents. Even though all my vents have ducks, I was just wondering, could this guy have wedged himself in somewhere? I just wanted to cross off all the all the dots, all the I's, cross the T's, you know, figure out if, if there's anywhere this guy could have went. There we go. And I couldn't figure out a thing. Not one thing for this little dude. Which was really disheartening. So I went and I go I went ahead and I emailed the seller and I said not the seller, the the gifter, I guess we'll call him in this case, and said, Hey, the black throat's gone. I explained the whole story I did to you. I'm so sorry. Blah blah blah. Um it was a whole page sob story. I'm not gonna go into it now. But to my surprise, he sent me back this whole reply and you know, mistakes happen. He goes, we can send you another one. And I was like, I have to pay for the second one. They said, no, we don't want you to pay for it. I was able to convince him to at least allow me to pay for shipping. And that's what I did. And I got Blackthroat Monitor number two a week after Thanksgiving. Now, remember, I said this guy was missing for eight days. So I have Blackthroat Monitor number two for one day. The next day, I'm laying in my bed getting ready to go to sleep. I've shut off all the heat lamps. It's been eight days. I've looked everywhere. I can't leave, you know, five heat lamps, 100 watts, just running everywhere. And I say, I'm, that's it. I'm going to bed. You know, I, I tried. This guy's gone. Who knows where he went? And it's about 1030 at night. And I hear a crinkling on the uh, floor of my room. And I happen to have that flashlight still on my, on my nightstand. I grab it. I turn it on. And here is Blackthroat number one just looking at me on the floor of my room. I couldn't even believe it. It was just, uh, I, I wouldn't even know what to say. It was incredible. Um, but that that was the story of how I got two black throat monitors, which is why this one is much more tame, uh, much more easygoing than that black throat two, who you know is new and just, uh, there's no hissing. Put my hand in here. There's no hissing. Notice the tail's not winding up to to whip me. I've picked this guy up. I've done everything. I'm just, he's going to his safe spot to digest, so I don't want to pick him up now. He just ate. But I thought I would show you a feeding, give you an update, and tell you the story of how I got two of my dream lizards, two black-throated monitors. All right, everyone. Take care. Thank you guys for supporting my reptile rescue family.